Welcome back, everyone. Um, today we've got a special topic e-class on sexism and heterosexism. Now, I know you've got a lot going on, so this is a condensed version of this, um, but there is also a handout on LGBTQ plus terminology in your Canvas module, um, should you like to learn more. So to start our special e-topic, I'd like you to take a minute to ponder these questions. So <clears throat> read through the questions um, and write down your answers and reflect on them in your uh, journal for the, at the end of the module. So first, how and when did you come to learn that not all people are straight? Where did most of the influence of your initial impressions or understanding of LGBTQ plus people come from? And who is the first gay or lesbian character TV, film, book, etc., that you experienced? And what was their portrayal like? Again, reflect on this in your journal. I look forward to hearing your responses. So to help frame our discussion of sexism um, and heterosexism, it's important that we differentiate between some uh, key terms and concepts. So um, to start with, biological sex is a medical term um, which refers to the chromosomal, hormonal, and anatomical characteristics that are used to classify an individual as female or male or intersex. Um, and individuals who are intersex, to clarify, are individuals who have uh, hormonal, uh, anatomical, or chromosomal characteristics of both males and females. In the past, they've been referred to as hermaphrodites. However, that's no longer a socially um, acceptable term. That's a very derogatory term. And so instead, we refer um, to these individuals as intersex. So in the United States, we've uh, traditionally viewed gender in terms of a binary of individuals either being male or female. However, um, as we've developed as a society, as we've become more open and inclusive, um, we are beginning to recognize um, that it really isn't uh, strictly binary, that uh, individuals have a number of different um, ways that they identify in terms of their gender and a number of different ways in which they express their gender identity. So gender identity is a person's um, personal sense of their own gender or how they perceive their gender. Um, and it may correlate with the sex that they're assigned at birth, or it may be different um, than the sex that they're assigned at birth. And gender expression um, refers to a person's behavior, mannerisms, interests, and appearance uh, that are associated with um, that particular gender within a particular cultural context. So for example, um, gender expression in terms of um, portraying yourself as masculine or male in an American society uh, might look different from uh, masculine or male portrayals in another country. And within the US, we tend to, um, well, this is true around the world, we uh, tend to assign um, roles to particular genders, right? So when people say that gender is socially constructed, this is um, largely what they're referring to. And this has to do with um, the roles and identities that we assign or stereotype to particular genders. So for example, stereotypically, women are seen as being more caring, feminine, um, better at housework, things like that. Um, the stereotypes are men are, you know, being masculine, uh, being rough and tough, being the breadwinner. Those are all uh, gender roles that we have created in our society. Now, um, it's important to recognize that individuals that you work with in whatever field of practice you go into may not um, align with or experience um, identify with these traditional binaries um, and stereotypes of what it is to be uh, a male or female in our society. Um, there are many people who um, don't identify as being either male or female um, in terms of their gender expression. Um, there are many individuals who identify as gender fluid um, and so they tend to have so they may have overlapping um, or um, transition between ge different um, gender identities at different times. And so this is a rather simplistic list um, in terms of gender identities and terms. Um, you know, there are any number from gender fluid, gender queer, um, 
and things like that. So it's important um, as you work with different individuals to continue to um, uh, grow your understanding uh, of the different um, labels that individuals use um, and be open to learning about new labels as well. Um, now let's talk about the differences between biological sex, gender, and sexual orientation. So sexual orientation relates to um, who an individual is attracted to. Um, so this is different from how they express their gender um, and um, in terms of how we think about biological sex. Um, it's important that we don't stereotype or assume um, that individuals are attracted to um, a particular um, gender um, just because of the way they dress or the way they act, right? Um, you can't actually identify someone as um, being gay or lesbian just on how they dress or how they talk or their mannerisms. Um, and this is because, again, gender identity and gender expression are very fluid and very different from um, sexual orientation. So some of the common language related to sexual orientation includes um, asexual, um, which are individuals who um, don't tend to, like don't have strong sexual feelings of attraction towards other individuals. Um, this does not mean that they don't want to be in intimate relationships, though. They may want to have um, more spiritual connections with individuals, um, but maybe not just um, physical connections with individuals. Um, straight or heterosexual is the common term uh, terms used for individuals who are attracted um, to people of the opposite sex. Homosexual is a term that we really don't actually use anymore um, in large part because it um, is associated with a lot of stigma. Instead, um, we refer to individuals or they tend to identify themselves as gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, and there are many, many, many other terms that aren't included in this list, um, pansexual or omnisexual. Um, and so now let's, we're gonna move into talking about um, heterosexism and sexism. And so keep in mind, again, um, the ideas of gender identity, gender roles and sexual orientation and the differences between these terms as um, we talk a little bit more about this. So let's talk a little bit about sexism and heterosexism. So sexism is prejudice, stereotyping, or discrimination, typically against women, on the basis of sex or gender expression. And so as we talked about in the last slide, um, we tend to assign um, stereotypes or roles to different genders. And these um, roles or stereotypes um, can be very limiting in terms of allowing an individual to pursue um, opportunities or the life that they want to pursue. Um, and sexism can really occur, as we've seen with the stereotypes, on a structural level, and it also occurs in kind of day-to-day -day interactions. So other examples of kind of structural sexism or sexism that's kind of ingrained into our society is the gender wage gap, where um, women on average earn 77% of what men do for the same amount of work, um, the same quality of work. We also see this in terms of the fact that um, women only make up 4% of the Fortune 500 CEOs. Uh, we've also seen this in terms of the Me Too movement um, and how difficult it is for women um, to access um, supports and services when they experience um, sexual assault or abuse, um, how difficult it is for them uh, to report that it happens either um, to uh, police or other um, criminal justice figures, or even to their friends and families. Now on an individual level, uh, much like we, we discussed with microaggressions um, in the last module, sexism um, can occur in those day-to-day -day interactions. We've um, seen examples in the news, you know, in terms of men catcalling women um, or otherwise putting them down. Um, and basically how, you know, what we see it as is um, ignoring the individual for who they are and simply um, kind of uh, sexualizing them or identifying them as a gender instead of as a human being or as an individual. Now, heterosexism is discrimination or prejudice against individuals um, who identify as LGBTQ plus on the assumption that heterosexuality is the normal sexual orientation. And as with sexism, heterosexism um, is ingrained 
throughout our society and occurs in day-to-day -day interactions. Um, in terms of society, we see it in the fact um, that only recently have individuals who identify as LGBT um, been able to get married. Um, gay marriage has only recently been passed in the United States, um, considering that the fight for gay rights started in the 1960s. Um, we also can see it, um, for example, in terms of our military and how our military um, for much of its history has not allowed openly gay individuals to serve. Um, really, in, and it, even in, through the 90s and early 2000s, um, we had the policy of don't ask, don't tell, which uh, meant that individuals could who were who identified as lesbian, gay, um, bi, or queer um, could serve so long as they didn't come out of the closet and weren't caught um, or seen in uh, same-sex relationships. Um, on an individual level, you know, we see this in terms of uh, homophobic slurs that are thrown out by um, individuals directed, uh, you know, whether or not they're directed at somebody who does identify as LGBTQ. Um, these slurs are meant to uh, discriminate, to put down, um, to suggest that the individual is less than or other. And so now on the next slide, I'm going to have you guys actually um, watch a TED talk about what um, LGBTQ life is like around the world. Up this e class, I'd like you to watch this TED talk and reflect on the questions What challenges do people who identify as LGBT face in the US and around the world? And what are some examples of how we're becoming more inclusive um, in the US and as a global society?